Hello and welcome to the WHS Journal Public Affairs Program. I'm Jerry Williams. Well, today on the Journal, you'll hear me speak with a homeless man who's doing some amazing and wonderful things. That's happening now on the WHS Journal. It's news and public affairs. We have 32 of these planters set up throughout Hartford. Um, the, the project was put on by the Charter Oak Cultural Center, which is right down on Main Street in Hartford. The project was uh, sponsored by Whole Foods, and they gave us quite a bit of money to put these planters together. And, and it's really, it's like a four by four planter. If you're from Hartford, you've probably seen one on the corner. Um, and we have a number of different vegetables inside that, uh, that we're growing. And basically, you know, throughout the year, as they grow to fruition, people can pick them. Anybody walking by can pick them and eat them. It's, it's fresh food. Um, and, and the money, the grant that we got goes toward, you know, not only putting together the planters, which we did uh, two years ago, but having people come out on a daily basis and water and just maintain the plants. So uh, it, it's a great way to, um, you know, the program is really geared toward people who are underprivileged, particularly people who are homeless or who have been homeless. So for us to be able to come out here and water these plants on a daily basis, not only is it something constructed to do, but we also get a, a gift card stipend to Walmart, which is great for food, hygiene products, and things like that. So it really helps out. How long have you been a part of this program? Uh, I've been a part of the Charter Oak Cultural Center for two years. Um, and within the Carter, Charter Oak Cultural Center is what's called the uh, the BOTS program. It stands for Beat of the Street. And we put out a monthly newsletter, um, which is written by people who are homeless or who have been homeless. It's a combination of um, poems, short stories, um, artists' renderings, pictures, things like that. And that comes out on a monthly basis. And that program also offers a, uh, a free education to Goodwin College, which is really amazing. I found out a couple of years ago when I was still homeless, um, I came by this magazine because on the back side of it, um, it, it listed the soup kitchens in the area. So I picked it up and I started reading through it. And I read an article about, you know, the, this graduation program from BOTS and how you can get a free scholarship to Goodwin College. And I was like, this is too good to be true. So I, uh, I looked into it. And yeah, I, I, what I had to do was over a period of a year, I had to go through about 52 classes. They were like two hours long each. And they're really preparatory classes for college. Um, I went to UConn, but I had to drop out almost 20 years ago from, uh, from mental health and substance abuse. So this has given me the opportunity to go back to school and to really, you know, get a decent paying job uh, after finishing up, um, you know, my, my four year education, which I'm doing in uh, in healthcare. If you're just tuning in, I'm with Jacob Dusick of the uh, Charter Oak Cultural Center. Now, you mentioned homelessness. Talk about your homelessness experience and, and what caused that. So the first time that I was homeless, I was 19 years old, and I had gone to the University of Connecticut for a year, and literally my second semester, I couldn't get out of bed, uh, and I didn't really know what was going on, and I, I had a severe depression, so I had to leave school, and I just kind of tumbled on this downward, downward spiral, um, and I ended up uh, homeless in the city of Bristol, literally living in an abandoned house with this gang activity going on. It was, you know, to go from an upbringing in Southington, you know, middle upper class upbringing to that, it was it was a real, uh, real shock. But I ended up living, surviving and coming out of there and getting a very long period of sobriety in my life. And unfortunately, uh, almost a decade of sobriety, I fell back about maybe uh, five years ago, um, fell back into drugs and alcohol after having accumulated just, you know, wonderful relationships with my family. A business. I was working for the state. I had a fiance, house, all of that, and um, I, I slipped back. I, I wasn't maintaining my mental health because I was working too many hours, and I ended up uh, picking up uh, drugs and alcohol again. So that was about five years ago, um, and I took to the streets of Hartford. I actually I went to a 30-day rehab. I got out. My fiance left me. I had liquidated all my equipment for the business, and literally I started living along the Connecticut River in Hartford for a period of about two years um, until a couple of years ago when I was able to, uh, to finally get housing, get the right caseworker, start maintaining my mental health issues, and clean up the addiction issues, and, and here I am today. Wow, you talked about having 
10 years of sobriety, a business, uh, working for the state, a fiance, a house and everything. You talked about off mic uh, an interesting trigger a tr uh, that caused you to relapse. What was that trigger? You know, looking back throughout that period of time, I was working so much between the business I started in the state of Connecticut that I really got ungrounded. You know, I have underlying mental health issues. I have bipolar and depression and anxiety. I was getting off the medication, getting away from therapy that I was doing, getting away from exercise, eating worse, and, and, and I slipped. But specifically, when I slipped, uh, th that's what you're asking about. And my, my fiance had the flu. I caught the flu as a result. And she had a cough medicine and it had codeine in it. And she offered me just a tablespoon of cough medicine with codeine. And after almost a decade of sobriety, in the back of my mind, I knew I shouldn't take it, but I took it anyway. Within a month after that, I was up here in Hartford buying cocaine and heroin again. You know, within about three years after that, I was up here homeless, living under bridges. So it was, it was a big fall. So here you are. You look great. You sound great. And you've been clean for how long now? Uh, it's been over a year now. Okay. Yeah. Great. And so you're part of the Charter Oak Cultural Center, the BOTS program. Beat of the Streets is a newspaper. Yeah. And it's called BOTS for short. Beat of the Streets. And you're part of the BOTS program. Talk about the BOTS program. Yeah, yeah. So just to kind of break it down again, um, the Charter Oak Cultural Center is a nonprofit agency in downtown Hartford, and they do a number of different things, uh, nonprofit things. And one organization that they they've created is called BOTS, or that stands for B O T S. It stands for Beat of the Street. And really, the two thing, the two main things that the well, the three main things that the BOTS program does. One is the planters, which I'm out here doing right now. Um, Two is the um, uh, the educational program, the 52 classes that you can go through and take throughout the year to get the scholarship uh, to Goodwin College. Uh, and three is the newspaper publication that they put out on a weekly basis. Um, the woman who runs that, her name is uh, Donna Berman, and she is just an incredible, incredible person who runs the Char Charter Oak Cultural Center. Uh, and her assistant, her name is Minu. Um, she's in charge of the BOTS program, and she does this uh, by herself as a volunteer, and literally she must put in 40 hours a week as a volunteer to keep this program going. She's really passionate about it. Uh, this year we graduated eight people from the program, so that's eight people that have, you know, the scholarship to Goodwin College to change their life. All these people are underprivileged. Some of them were previously homeless. You know, we're out here, you know, working for 10 bucks an hour. Now you got an opportunity to go to school, finish a degree, get out, make a living wage with benefits. It's just an unbelievable opportunity for, for people. Jacob Dusick from the Charter Oak Cultural Center. Now I understand you're about to start school at Goodwin College, right? Yes, I am. So I'm, I'm going to be starting in the fall time. I'm really, really looking forward to it. I've been out of school. Um, you know, I, I went to UConn for about a year back in 99, 2000. So I've been out of school for a long time. I've always wanted to go back. I never figured out how that would happen. Funny, I've for the past 20 years, I've wanted to go back to school, but I've been figuring out, you know, when money wasn't there, Time wasn't there, you know, uh, when, when money was there, the other things were in the way. And lo and behold, God works in mysterious ways, man, because here I am fulfilling my dream of going back to school. And how did I get it? Through being homeless and through being a drug addict and recovering from that. I mean, I never saw this coming. It's, it's really, it's serendipity, you know? Wow. I'm rooting for you, man. <laughs> I'm rooting for you, man. By the grace and the power of God, you can you can do this. So I encourage you to stay on the right track. You're part of a lot of different things, man. Yeah. So what's Bags of Love all about? Yeah, I am. Um, so Bags of Love is an organization. They're out of South Windsor, and it was actually created by uh, a young kid. He was like eight or nine years old, and his father helped them put it together. Basically, they were driving through Hartford one day, and they drove by a lot of people who were holding signs that, that you know said homeless and you know he said dad what's going on here and you know he explained you know some of these people might be homeless and they're in need so he said um he got this idea of well why don't we put you know little bags together with items inside the bags which the homeless people might need and that's where the idea took off from there they developed a website 
Um, they do big fundraisers for it, and you know I'm part of that now. Um, we're we're cr creating new bags right now, putting new items specifically geared toward you know exactly what people out on the street would need. Things like um, you know basic hygiene products, you know wipes, um, uh, toothpaste, toothbrush, um, ponchos, uh, high protein energy bars water, you know, a first aid kit, all things very relevant that, that people out here need. Um, and that's what's going out. You know, people are traveling around, they have these in their car, and whether you come by holding somebody holding a sign or just, you know, you're at a soup kitchen volunteering, or you just know somebody who might need those items, you can go up and hand them this bag and include it inside the bag is paperwork on things like where to find soup kitchens in the city of Hartford. Uh, there's paperwork on uh, where you could find detox or rehab if you have a drug issue. Paperwork on where you could go and get a dentist appointment if your teeth need to be cleaned or if teeth, teeth need to be pulled. You know, if your foot is hurting, where you can go to a, you know, somebody for, with a specialty for that. So the information contained within these packets is really, it's a way to get um, services and resources directly out to these people, direct numbers that they can use uh, that, that they might be in need of. All right, and also you're part of the Speakers Bureau, so you go out and speak and tell your story from time to time, from what I understand. Yeah, yeah, I do. So um, I'm part of a nonprofit called Hands on Hartford, and that's over on Bartholomew Street in the South End near Park. First of all, what aren't you a part of, Jacob? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what? It's just uh, I, I'm, I'm a part of a lot of different things. I don't even know how it happened. I just, you know, by the grace of God, I, I met the right people at the right time that pointed me in the right direction. I got better and I got housing and it's just, I want to give that back. You know, it's in my heart. I want to give that back right now. So uh, just going back, Hands on Hartford, I'm a part of that organization. Hands on Hartford, they do housing for people with AIDS. They have a food pantry. They have a speakers bureau, which, which specifically is, is what I'm a part of. And this Speakers Bureau is composed of about six or seven people who were previously homeless and they've recovered from homelessness. And what we do is we go out to corporate places, we go on to Aetna, we go to colleges like uh, Quinnipiac, uh, UConn, we go to middle schools, high schools, private schools, rotary clubs, pretty much anything you could think of we'll go to and we speak there. You know, usually two speakers come, we speak for about 20 minutes each and we talk about our experience with homelessness and how we recovered from it. And basically, you know, what we're doing is we're going out there and we're breaking a lot of stereotypes. And we're, um, you know, particularly people out in the rural rural areas, they don't know what's going on with homelessness. You know, they're driving over bridges to going to work every day, and there are people living under them that they have no idea what their life is like. So we're, we're illuminating uh, what's going on there, hopefully breaking some stereotypes and getting people motivated, involved to, to help with, with the homelessness issue in our community. Amen. Keep up the good work, brother, and uh, look like you're on the right track to trying to get your life uh, together. Folks, when he talked about when he had his business for 10 years, uh, he had his own tree service business. He's a tree guy, so <laughs> that's what he had for 10 years. So who knows, somebody might be calling you up. So he's Jacob Duzik, which is, Duzik is? Is Polish. It's Polish. I, I don't speak Polish, <laughs> but it's Polish. And the last thing I, I kind of wanted to, uh, to, to wrap up saying is that um, with the scholarship, you know, Goodwin College is great. They offer a lot of different things. I'm, I'm getting a bachelor's degree in human resources, which a lot of people are doing from the BOTS program because they want to go into related fields and become caseworkers and work for nonprofits. Um, I'm planning on going to get my graduate's degree and really deep in my heart what I want to do is become a, a psychotherapist and work with people one-on-one -on -one who have been homeless, who have drug addictions, who have mental illness issues they're dealing with. That has, um, it's funny, it's been a goal for the past like 20 years of mine to go back to school and do that and lo and behold, here I am, graced with the opportunity to do this through these great organizations I'm a part of. Amen. He's Jacob Duzik of Hands on Hartford, the Speakers Bureau, the Charter Oak Cultural Center, Bags of Love, <laughs> Bots, which is Beat of the Streets, and a whole lot more, man. God bless you and keep up the good work, man. Thank you, man. It was great meeting you.
I did give them an invitation to listen card, folks. I did let them know uh, that WIHS is food for the soul. <laughs> and you just heard my conversation with Jacob Dusick. If you would like more information about what you heard today, call WIHS 860-346-1049. That's 860-346-1049. The opinions expressed are those of the participants, not necessarily of those of the staff or management of the station. I'm Jerry Williams for the WIHS Journal Public Affairs Program at 104.9 FM, WIHS in Middletown. <laughs>